Britain, once the world's biggest empire and most powerful economy, is today a broken nation. For decades, wages have fallen, social standards have declined, and the cost of living has pushed hundreds of thousands into poverty and even homelessness. Economic and political turmoil, social tensions, and rising inequality have created the perfect storm for instability, bringing an already wounded nation to its knees. And this crisis is not only a threat to Britain, but also to Europe and the global economy. Welcome to Living History. In the 19th century, Britain had a vast empire of unchallenged financial, military, and diplomatic power. It had colonized around a quarter of the world and had grown into the world's largest and most influential economy. Not only this, but it was also a geopolitical figurehead. Just consider this. At the 1815 Congress of Vienna, Britain was a key architect in shaping Europe's future after the catastrophic Napoleonic Wars. But then, fast forward to the aftermath of World War II and we find Britain profoundly transformed. Burdened with debt and the colossal task of reconstruction, the nation faced new realities. Decolonization, economic challenges, and geopolitical shifts marked the end of Britain's era of unchallenged supremacy, and the consequences are still with us till this day. Today, Britain's finances are in such turmoil that its people are facing post-war calamities without having even gone to war. Around 15% of UK households households have been going hungry, or forced to abandon meals and basic essentials like heating. Unlike in the aftermath of the war, today shortages are not the problem. Instead, it's the cost of food itself. In 2022, inflation rose to its highest level in over 40 years, pushing up prices while wages stagnated. But there's more. Britain's post-war national debt soared to 237% of its GDP. 25 years later, in the late 60s, it had fallen to 61% and has been on an upward trajectory ever since. Today, it stands at around 85%, and while this may not be as high as Italy, Spain, or Portugal, it is in many ways more alarming. You see, Britain's economy has been holding on by the fingernails for decades and has placed big bets on service and banking industries while completely dismantling what used to be the lifeline industries of Great Britain. Traditionally, Britain has been economically reliant on coal mining, textiles, and shipbuilding, which all faced decline after the war as global competition intensified. Unemployment and economic stagnation meant Britain was slow to adapt and compete with emerging economies, which stifled growth and prosperity. The gradual collapse of the British Empire also destroyed the economy, as former colonies gained independence and Britain lost valuable trading partners and sources of raw materials. The 1950s offered glimmers of improvement, with technological innovation and modernization. The government heavily invested in infrastructure and public housing, stimulating growth and improving living standards. The establishment of the National Health Service in 1948 also represented a landmark achievement, providing essential healthcare services to all British citizens regardless of income. But today, many of these hallmark institutions of British society are crumbling. NHS waiting times are unmanageable, with over 7.6 million patients on waiting lists in 2023. And funding shortages have led to cuts in hospital beds and staff, impacting the quality and accessibility of care. But it would be too easy to pin everything on the war, because while the government was looking for something to blame and the public struggled through inflation and labor disputes, an even bigger economic crisis was on the horizon. The fact is, today's social challenges are also tied to the consequences of economic decisions of the 1970s and 80s. In the 70s, Britain was plunged into an economic nightmare, experiencing a level of inflation so severe it was even being compared to the crisis-stricken Argentina. Unemployment soared through the sky, and economic growth hit a standstill in the wake of global oil shocks that rattled the nation to its core. Sounds eerily familiar, doesn't it? When the cost of living turns into the cost of survival, how do you determine how great a nation actually is? The real issue here is that it's been more than 20 years and six prime ministers, and the financial crisis is only getting worse on the government's watch. 
which is why I've been using Ground News to stay updated on all things politics, so I make informed decisions when I vote this year. Their platform quickly shows me how news is covered from across the political spectrum, adding context so I can truly comprehend polarizing events like this election season we're in. Check out their breakdown on this report. That found millions of people in the UK need to double their income to escape poverty. Ground News found 31 articles covering this, but it's a near total blind spot for people only following conservative news. And looking down here, many of these articles come from highly reliable sources, with each one giving me some new detail. But reading their summary of this from different political viewpoints gets me up to speed on any breaking news within seconds. Understanding these types of issues is the only way to truly hold the government accountable, so go to ground.news slash living history for 40% off their vantage plan, making a month's worth of infinite knowledge less than your daily cup of coffee. Thank you Ground News for sponsoring this video. But now, back to Britain in the 70s. You see, just as Russia's invasion of Ukraine damaged global oil supplies in our times, so prices dramatically increased in the 1970s in response to OPEC's embargoes imposed by Arab countries on Western nations, supporting Israel during the Yom Kippur War. Isn't it scary how eerily reminiscent our present times are? Then, as now, Britain was heavily reliant on imported oil for energy, infrastructure and transportation, and the sudden surge in prices also led to soaring inflation. Things were bad really bad. In fact, in a humiliating admission of failure, Britain was forced to seek a bailout from the International Monetary Fund IMF, in 1976, highlighting the Wilson government's ineffective management. The result? Inflation eroded the savings and incomes, contributing to social unrest and political instability. Unemployment led to widespread hardship and dislocation, particularly in regions heavily reliant on declining industries like mining. And the IMF bailout? Well, that came with stringent conditions, including austerity measures and fiscal restraint, fueling social tensions and straining public services even further. Still, there was a new hope that emerged at this time. As Britain's colonial empire waned, its entry into the European Economic Community in 1973 offered vital economic resurgence. Over the next 40 years, the results would be dramatic. Over half of the UK's imports, along with 2% of its GDP, 48% of its foreign direct investment, and more than 3.5 million jobs, had become deeply intertwined with its EU membership. This stark transformation secured an economic safety net that Britain once held in its long-gone empire, but membership could not save Britain from itself. Which, of course, brings us to the Iron Lady. In the 1980s, Margaret Thatcher launched a seismic economic transformation, driven by bold neoliberal policies meant to unleash the power of free market capitalism. The result? Britain was reshaped once again. Privatization meant state-owned industries, like British Telecom and British Gas, were sold off to private investors, transforming formerly state-controlled sectors into competitive marketplaces. Then came a wave of entrepreneurial innovation, driving productivity and economic growth. And the Big Bang reforms of 1986 deregulated the London Stock Exchange, opening up the financial sector to foreign competition, revolutionizing Britain's financial industry, and cementing London's status as a global financial hub. Sounds good, right? But Thatcher's drastic policies also raised concerns about rising income inequality, social dislocation, and the erosion of public services. Not to mention they kick-started what can only be described as a property bubble that has made housing all but unaffordable for the majority of people. But maybe we leave that to another video. Today, Thatcherite issues are crippling the country more than ever before. Almost two decades of stagnant income and growing income inequality has led to a productivity gap. In fact, a 2023 OECD report has shown that the UK spends over £106 billion a year subsidizing social inequality. But as the government tried to hold together a reformed but fractured economic landscape in the early 2000s, there came another crisis. The 2008 financial crash sent shockwaves through Europe, bringing banks and institutions to their knees. In fact, Britain's economic woes at the time deeply impacted Europe, perhaps foreshadowing a crisis 
crisis that is yet to come. But more on that in a moment. After 2008, the UK government once again pulled out its tried and failed, I mean tried and tested austerity policies, to help restore confidence in financial markets. What followed were significant cuts in public spending, particularly in healthcare, education, and social welfare. The effects were profound, increasing the strain on vulnerable populations and widening social inequalities. In fact, long-term effects have shown the average wage in 2023 was actually lower than in February 2008. And then, of course, came Brexit. Across four decades, the tendrils of UK-EU partnership had intertwined so deeply with the UK's essence and strength. Over half of its imports came from the EU, and nearly 44% of its exports went to European markets, contributing to its GDP and supporting some 3.5 million jobs through foreign direct investment from Europe. No matter where you stand on the topic of Brexit, the decision to leave the EU in 2016 sparked a drastic economic fallout. The UK's economy has since contracted by an estimated £140 billion, and the job market has seen a loss of 1.8 million jobs, translating to a 4.8% drop. But I hear you thinking that this all sounds like a British problem, so why should Europe worry? Well, the devil's in the details. And the numbers tell a compelling story of how a severe economic downturn hitting the UK would create a tsunami wave heading for the entire European Union. You see, the UK and EU remain economically entwined. In 2022, Britain continued to export a hefty slice of its goods and services to the EU, while European investments in the UK stood strong. This lingering interdependence means any economic turbulence in the UK doesn't stop at the English Channel. It washes over into the EU. Secondly, the complexities of the post-Brexit landscape have already hit supply chains, particularly sectors like automotive and pharmaceuticals. Now envision the chaos of a full-scale economic crisis in the UK could unleash. Disrupted supply chains, job cuts across Europe, and industries scrambling in the fallout. The domino effect on employment and production would be nothing short of catastrophic. And consider London's financial heartbeat. Even without its EU passporting rights, the city remains a global financial hub, intricately linked with Europe's financial ecosystem. Post-Brexit, the city's GVA is projected to drop by 7.5% in the coming years. An economic slump across the UK would trigger a wave of panic selling and capital flight, rocking European markets and putting a freeze on vital investments across the continent. And let's not skirt around the potential for social and political upheaval. This economic scenario doesn't just risk financial damage, it threatens to unravel decades of diplomatic and cooperative achievements, at a time when global geopolitical tensions are at a peak. The potential for political instability harks back to the delicate balance of power during the Cold War era, and with a looming Russian threat, a weakened Britain poses risks to European unity and global stability. To find out more about the historic challenges Germany is facing, check out our next video, linked here.